Good evening. Today is September 28th, 2021, 6.20 p.m. <sighs> I'd like to talk to you all about the ripples that we leave in life and a bit of a continuation of the cost of being you. Whether in relationship, I mean, everything about our life is relationship, whether with ourselves, with God, with others, children, spouse, colleagues. And, and just a side note, I don't even believe in bosses anymore. I believe in everybody has their role. And as a team, together, everyone achieves more, as well as when you know your role, you just do your part. And you work for yourself. Everybody works for themselves. Not to say selfish, but when you go to work, it's for you. Whether working is working out to relieve stress, to gain finances, to fulfill your purpose, it's all work. Whether working on your relationship, raising your children, it's all work. And when you recognize your purpose in the work you're doing, it is easier to perform the job that you're doing. Going back to the ripple, do you leave stuff for other people to come behind you and do? Frustrate them because you're sorry? Just, it is what it is. And it amazes me how the younger population was raised, another ripple, how did you raise your children, was raised to be sorry. If you never raise your child to have value of what they do, how they do it, because some people will just do something versus do it with the expectation of who you're doing it for. Now, if you're doing it for yourself, I know everybody, I said everybody works for themselves, but let's say you're painting your house for yourself and you don't want to smooth out some of these things, that's for you. That's how you want to present your home? That's your choice. You got the paint on there to protect the wood or whatever hardy board or beautified, make it look different. That's your choice. However, if you're doing it for a customer or someone who is in a supervisory position to pay you based on the desired outcome then that's a different thing. And this is where the integrity of your work comes into play. Did you do what was asked of you in the way that is pleasing for the person that's gonna pay you? I'm a firm believer. If I do shabby work, pay me for what it's worth or don't pay me at all. I'm a firm believer in giving people what they want. Now, if you cannot communicate to me effectively what you want, then that's a different story. If you change up the scope of the project after certain parts of the project have been completed, that's a different story. So that all goes to how much does it cost to be you? At the end of a project, I was talking to a colleague and he was talking about a lady who went out of town and they went out of town so the concrete work can be done to their home and they wouldn't have to be back and forth on the driveway or whatever. So there were different colorings that were originally designed to be done. It was agreed upon, it was in writing. And upon completion and their return, the lady did not like it. Her husband put the bill and the contractor said, hey, it's gonna be another $35,000 for me to change this based on the end result that you want. They paid it and that's fair. You can't change the scope of a project and expect people just to go on the money that they did to complete the previous project. At the end of the day, it's work. And 
that's a good ripple that you leave. It's like, I paid you for what you did. I recognize I didn't like it. Even though it was what we agreed to be done. In all fairness, I paid you again to perform what I want to be done. And some people will change, but everybody can't afford or don't want to pay for their change. And I recognize that when you're dealing with people who don't want to pay the cost to be the boss or to pay for what their desires are, then that's when we have a problem and a bad ripple in the energy that you're dealing with other people and the expectation of, oh, well, I'm gonna hold up the end part of your pay because it's not what I want. I had a relative do that and I had to bail them out because uh, it was gonna get not nice. I can't say it was gonna get violent, but that was the imminent threat. And I'm just like, let's pay this guy, get him on, you know, we don't have to deal with the X factor. Pay this man what he say he want and be through with it. No bad blood, you don't have to look over your shoulder when you come home, X, Y, and Z. So, I've seen both sides of it. And these ripples that we leave with people can cut off ties, can give people a bad taste in their mouth about dealing with certain customers. And even when not doing good work, it can leave a ripple of, I don't wanna work with you. I've had a customer to tell me, even when I did less than superior work, because the integrity I had was like, hey, you know, I, I'm not charging you full rate. Matter of fact, don't pay me anything at all. It wasn't a big project. It, it, the, 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 the slight could be overlooked and a bigger project it was like no you got integrity I want to deal with you on the next project and I was like well, thank you so what ripples are you leaving with people what is the effect of your presence is it a gift or let's put it like this is it a blessing or is it a curse is it a gift or is it a detriment? Is it an asset or is it a detriment? I'm trying to find something that's obviously a gift, but it escapes me at this point. Moving on. I was also talking with same colleague about hiring people who are broken and are hurt and are quick to catch an attitude, quick to go off on things that meant nothing. I was even listening to a sermon about relationships, mostly marriage. And I'm gonna start off with this. You know, in the um, in the talk, the pastors. It was a panel of pastors, and they were communicating about. This one lady had a question and she said, how do I become less dominant in a relationship? And the, more, the, the, the first part was you're hurt because people are not meeting the expectation and your guard is up and you don't feel safe enough to be a woman, enough to let the man be the man. And at the end of the day, maybe your choice in men, and all of this is gonna tie in together, maybe your choice in men is not to the point where someone makes you feel safe so you don't have to be the lead because her exact words were if I ask you to take the trash out and you don't I may have some comments about it I may even bark it bark it at you especially when in the past you haven't done it and furthermore I'll do it myself if you don't do it in a time that I expect it to be done and I get it I was raised you don't let the trash get to be an issue before it's taken out my parents hated bugs, so trash didn't stay in the house hardly at all. Matter of fact, we had bags that we would put food trash in before we put it in the, the bag of the trash can inside the house 
And when that got full, it was my responsibility to get it outside the house. Matter of fact, before it became full. So I was definitely of the mind that I'm not getting jacked up by my daddy for nothing. And I'm gonna get this trash out too sweet, <laughs> ASAP, <laughs> as quickly as possible. Cause I didn't want neither my mama or my daddy getting in me about nothing. So that was a ripple of parenting. And I look at people who are quick to get an attitude based on action, being asked to do something, especially on a child. If I'm hiring you to do what I ask you to do, it shouldn't be a problem for you to do what I ask you to do, as long as it's in the scope of the work. Now, if I'm asking you to do something outside of the scope of the work, then that's different. If we're working, doing construction, or whatever, and cleanup is a problem, then you need to get off my you need to get off my payroll because I am not paying you to just mess up and we leave somebody in house nasty. A matter of fact, I don't even like working in mess no way. So we're not gonna leave this job site messy and we gotta come back the next day and, and walk over trash and nails and stuff that could probably puncture people's foot. And especially when you probably can't afford puncture proof shoes or steel toe shoes or what have you. And possibility you stepping on a nail because you didn't want to pick up the wood with a nail sticking up in it and put it in trash or remove it from the immediate work position or if you fall I mean you could fall on that nail or what have you and that become a problem so these are things that we need to think about when we think about how much does it cost to be us because I'm quick to tell you I don't want you working with me I mean, I'll give you a chance, but once I fill you out and I see if I'm in lead position, if my role is lead and you can't follow my lead, not to say that I know everything, but if you can't follow my lead on certain protocols, meaning, hey, leave that customer's personal belongings alone, or hey, um, let's not, um, let's make sure we got a mask on when we go inside these folks' house this is proper protocol or wipe your feet before you come in the house or hey you can't smoke on this customer's house this is just respect i don't care if the customer's smoking or not you're not there to be on leisure time your break unless we there all day should not be on the customer's time matter of fact i don't care if you take a water break no nah, we're not going to take a smoke break on this customer's house that's just not part of my company protocol so again what ripples are you leaving being on other folks team and seeing folks take their break and throw the cigarette out in a neighbor's yard and they got a clean yard even though you may not value but they value a clean yard and you got two and three cigarette butts out here guess what you just made a ripple you just made a not positive effect on how this person is viewing this team working on their property it's not good and then when ramifications come to you and you get defensive now we leave ripples and now you figure out how much does it cost to be you how much does it cost to be you how much does it cost to keep your habits at work on the job at home around your kids around your wife who has breathing issues and you're gonna smoke around her because you don't really care. Something to think about. How much does it cost to be you? And in that cost to be you, what ripples are you leaving in other people's lives? So often I've had and younger, I, 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 can, I can even say older folks book on protocols that I put in place when I'm the hiring person and it's just like, you know, this is this is why people hire me, because I am. Like my last customer, she said that I'm very meticulous and neat. I clean up behind myself. I mean, I can't say everything is spotless, but it's not intrusive to the point where I leave a mess that is something that somebody don't want to deal with. 
and that's important because when doing certain type of work people do expect a certain type of trash or whatever to be made or dust to be accumulated but I shouldn't have a clean up if you're taking out a sewer pipe I shouldn't expect the sewer pipe to be left on my lot I know people who do that if it's your job to deal with certain hazardous waste then that should be assumed in a part of the job and if it costs extra that should be discussed and negotiated up front if you don't talk about fees up front then people get upset when on the back end and say hey well it's gonna cost this well hmm you said it up front so maybe we'll pass on this you gotta do your homework and don't come back with an estimate that's two or three times changed because you forgot to do your homework do you know your job and that's important you should know your job you should know what's required in being a teacher for example do you do an evaluation of your students? You know, one question popped in my head. It's like, do you know my child as a student? Do you know their learning style? Do you know them as a person to an extent? Can you give a character evaluation after the first couple of months of being around my child? Because it's going to take time for them to come out of their shell. Do you know what my child's strengths or weaknesses are in your subject area and that says a lot as a teacher if you're going to be teaching my child or for me as a teacher if I'm going to teach your child I was a teacher and that's important because if I don't know you I can't teach you and if I don't care about you you don't care about what I'm teaching you twofold so we must be able to identify with each other and show some concern or well-being for there to be any value in the transfer of knowledge. Whether parent, teacher, preacher, it doesn't matter. It's important. Furthermore, as a contractor, do I know what's all inclusive of the process, the logistics? If I'm gonna put in a bathroom, I have to consider the plumbing, electrical, plumbing and electrical while framing out so that I can be sure that there is space for these things to be inside walls as well as underground or make sure that there's a landing with a certain height to give space for certain plumbing or electrical to go up under the floor or what have you. And even consider if somebody's screwing in the floor do you have the electrical out the way enough so when somebody screws in, they don't hit an electrical line or something like that? If I'm a mechanic, I shouldn't tell you I'm going to change the oil and forget to change the oil filter. I just drop the oil out and I don't change the oil filter. What? Or I forget to put the oil plug back on and you run down the street and all the oil run out. You owe me a motor, buddy. Or if I put the tire on and I change the tires out, but I forget to put the valve stem back in to hold the air in. So I get down the street and the air is going out. Yeah, you owe me a tow back to your shop. You owe me whatever money I lost from trying to get to wherever I was counting to get to, especially I'm trying to get work. I got loss of uh, uh, employment benefits. Hey, you owe me. And these are the ripples we leave on people's lives, the stains that we leave in terms of our business, our character, in a relationship. If every time I ask you a question, you get on the defensive, that's not my fault. If we knew in this relationship that every time I ask you a question, you get on the defensive, and it's the first few months or what have you in the relationship, that's not on me. That's what you came from. Now, after five, you know, probably four more years that's on me because I've to an extent because I've either embraced it or helped to heal it and a lot of people in our lives we're not helping with the healing process I'll tell you this if a person is not allowing healing to occur either side that's on them if you can't be honest enough with the person to tell them, hey, 
your stuff stinks. And you don't have to say it like that, but communicate in a way that says, hey, look, I'm not trying to trigger any of, any of your trauma. I'm trying to let you know that I don't appreciate when you come at me like this or you communicate like this or when you hit like this or when you perform a certain action or this situation that happened on such and such day around these circumstances, help me understand what this is so that we can move beyond this, whether it's a part or to a better start to something different and let me not trigger you because I don't want any more traumatic experiences. I don't want any ripples of you on me negatively because it's costing me too much to deal with you under these terms or these circumstances or these situations that are unnecessary frustrations manifesting from all this stuff. So let's figure out a plan to, you know, keep refrain from having these same events. Also, can you own your stuff on the other on the flip side is can you own the stuff own your stuff enough to recognize that you're wrong? That this is not helpful. This is not a positive environment based on these actions, reactions, responses that 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 trigger you that should not trigger a normal relationship. For example, if I make a mistake and say if, if we talk about technicians and I say auto technician instead of ophthalmic technician it's still technicians and maybe my brain would just it just made a mistake it just made an error or x-ray technician or whatever type of technician I just made a mistake and especially if all these type of technicians are in my head for whatever reason it doesn't mean I'm trying to slight you because I mislabeled you. It, it was just a mistake. But when you take that to heart, like I'm trying to on purpose, I'm trying to attack you with it. In a normal situation, that's an easy correction. But because you're sensitive already, you take it to heart. And now I become the villain based on your previously broken heart that I really had nothing to do with. But hey, life. It happens. We all have our issues. We all have our growth points. We all have our brokenness. We all have our road to recovery and our healing. No matter how whole you are, there's still areas of you that are not perfect. And I want to challenge everybody to leave people with their integrity. If certain, certain things hurt you, communicate it without going off. Take some deep breaths. Seven is a good number. 10 is ideal. Each one deeper and deeper. In your nose, slow out your mouth. And get yourself calmed down to the point where you can communicate effectively without just reacting and going off. Recognize the space you're in. Do you need to defend yourself in this space? Do you really need to defend yourself to the point where you really have to go off in this space? Or do you need to... Is, it is that necessary? If, if you're in an environment where you need to defend yourself like that, and I will say, hey, some environments call for certain types of guards to be up. And I'm not saying you always have to go off to the deep end because when you go off on the deep end, somebody may be ready to compete with that energy and contest you with similar force. On the other side, you know, you may just hurt somebody who was just trying to be nice to you. And at the end of the day, you got to figure out how much is it going to cost you to be you? Oh, wheel drive, baby! But, uh, you, you, so, uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not, I promise you I'm not, but I am saying, I am challenging us all to just think about what we're doing and when you, and, and some of y'all, 
y'all folks need to stop biting the hand that feeds you. I'm gonna just say that. When you got a good person in your life and you keep manipulating them and keep attacking them and keep doing hurtful things, the hand gonna start pulling back and stop giving what you may want or expect from the situation. So just things to think about. Thank you for your time. Have an awesome day. May you grow and prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. In Jesus' name.